Welcome to our presentation uh, on security in the Arctic. So the Arctic may not seem to you as an interesting um, area to you at all. Um, it might just be an area with polar bears and crazy Eskimos. However, the Arctic is important to everyone in the world, especially now with the uh, important threat of climate change as well. So that's what our presentation will be on today. Uh, a quick outline, and then he's going to talk about, uh, she's going to introduce the Arctic and as well as talk about the Arctic Council and UNCLOS. Um, then Laura and I will talk about the threat of climate change and the Arctic itself, and then we'll end with a conclusion and take home message. Um, so let's first locate the Arctic region. Um, most people may know it as the North Pole, however there are several uh, definitions of where the Arctic region may be. Um, the most common definition is the region above the Arctic Circle, and the Arctic Circle is this um, imaginary line on the globe at around 33 degrees, um, which is represented here by the blue dotted line. And everything north of the line to everything inside that line um, consists of the Arctic region. Some uh, say that um, it is everything north of the Arctic sea line, so everything that is um, ice and has no potential to grow in trees. Um, and others say that it is uh, all the countries in the north where the uh, temperature in summer does not fluctuate much from uh, 10 degrees Celsius. Um, so there are people who live in the Arctic region. Um, however, because of the extreme weather conditions, it's not common and uh, very hard to travel and live as well. Um, indigenous people are believed to live there for uh, around a thousand years already, and there are still people um, who live there. Today, around four million people live in the Arctic region. Um, many of those live in um, cities and towns, as you see in this picture. Um, but also there are people who uh, still live the native, the old way, who rely on fishing and hunting and natural resources for their survival. And these people still live in villages, um, and you see those here. Um, in the modern Arctic, um, uh, they use the region for extractions of oil and gas. Um, recently, tourism has been increasing, and a lot of researchers go there to um, obtain information and conduct their research. However, current changes have been occurring in the world, and uh, these have proposed a few challenges. Um, uh, climate change is one of these. Uh, climate change causes for the heating of the of the globe, which causes melting, which causes um, ice to um, to melt and the sea to open up, which which um, causes for more routes for shipping for commercial for commercial shipping and for um, uh, tourism. Um, to go against um, against these potential problems, um, there are two organi main organizations that uh, regulate these. It's the Arctic Council and the UNCLOS. The Arctic Council consists of eight member states um, in the Arctic region and around that. Um, and it is a leading intergovernmental forum um, that defines the limits of territorial uh, sorry, it's a leading intergovernmental forum um, that um, uh, that promotes cooperation and interaction between Arctic states. Um, it is for sustainable development and environmental protection. Um, and there are around six organizations who um, um, stand for the indigenous people still, and around six organizations around the world will the Arctic Council. Um, the observer status is... Um, open to uh, any non-Arctic uh, states. So the council consists of eight states, um, which are Canada, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Russia, and Sweden, which are the blue highlighted countries in the map, and the territorial ones are Canada, USA, Norway, Russia, and Denmark, um, which were the ones in the Arctic region that I explained uh, previously. Then there's the uh, UNCLOS, which is the United Nations Convention for the Law of the Sea. Um, they started operating in 1982, um, and then it's an international agreement that defines the limits of territorial seas um, of nations and areas in which they could exploit uh, marine resources. They are basically seen as the rules of the sea um, uh, for the use of the high seas international navigation and outlines the rights and responsibilities of uh, marine environment. Um, there are currently 162 countries that are part of this and have signed um, this law. Uh, so then more in depth about climate change. So just to quickly recap, climate is the weather of a place averaged over a time period and often 30 years is taken for that. Um, scientists have 
um, been looking for trends when studying climate and they found that and due to climate change, the world's glaciers and northern ice cap are melting at accelerating rates. Um, and they were very anxious because this has happened in just a few decades and not over a long period of time because then it wouldn't be that bad. Um, because they're so anxious and there's a lot of uh, evidence uh, for their um, anxiousness, uh, policymakers now recognize that climate change is a threat and uh, consequently effective mitigation and adaption strategies will be needed. Um, so just to represent uh, what is happening, uh, due to climate change, the temperatures are rising and because of that, the Arctic sea ice is melting. Um, because of its melting, reflective ice that would reflect the sun um, are disappearing and the darker ocean waters absorb more heat, which then fulfills the circle with temperatures rising again because of that. And if nothing is done, this will continue to get worse. Um, so, as you can see, and as well as that in 1984 it was like this, and in 2006 thing like that, and the rate at which it's melting has been doubled uh, since the 1980s, according to scientists. Um, however, with the melting of the Arctic come uh, opportunities. Um, one of them is that energy resources under the polar ice caps become more accessible. Um, and because 25% of the world's oil and gas resources are located there, this could uh, result in a gold rush by the international community. Um, this is because uh, not all of the Arctic is claimed by uh, national states, which leaves an uh, undecided area with these resources left. And of course, um, countries want to have a part of these possible resources. Um, another opportunity are the faster shipping routes that become more available. Uh, you have the Northwest Passage and the Northern Sea Route. Um, the Northern Sea Route could decrease the journey of uh, ships uh, with 22%, which would you know, equate to a cheaper shipping uh, uh, cost. Um, and that's why a lot of countries want to um, you know, have access to these passages too. Um, but there is a conflict between territorial waters and uh, international waters there. Um, and as well the Northwest Passage that would make it easier um, to go from Europe to um, the coast of America. So um, that's another opportunity. And this would decrease journey with uh, 11%. Then, uh, next to opportunities, there are also risks. So, the gas is trapped under the permafrost, which is the ice that never melts normally from the Arctic, but when it may melt with climate change. Um, could release carbon and methane gas, which are uh, the more severe greenhouse gases, which would create a more severe climate effect that would influence the whole world. Um, with the Arctic melting, there are also rising sea levels, which could possibly flood many coastal cities and low-lying areas if climate change um, is here to stay and will increase melting of the Arctic. Um, with this, a stress multiplier on all societies and states will be there, uh, since states are of course anxious that their country will be affected by uh, all this. And human survival is dependent on the health of the biosphere and the coupled ocean atmosphere. And if this is not healthy due to climate change, then the whole international community is threatened. So the Arctic region has historically played a very strategic role, especially during the Cold War, when both superpowers saw it as a theater of military escalation. The United States and the Soviet Union both used it as a, an area for missile defense and submarine activity. After the Cold War, however, the military significance decreased and it de-escalated as um, the harsh climate and poor conditions really became apparent. This uh, narrative changed to creating a more emphasis, uh, a greater emphasis on the environmental and non-security um, and military problems that the Arctic faces, such as climate change as well. So this brought the necessity for cooperation between states, which is exactly what the Arctic Council tries to do, bringing dialogue and bringing countries to the table to negotiate and make intentions clear. So not only has Arct um, climate change created a big uh, security threat to the Arctic and the international community, but because of the jurisdiction and border related issues, a military threat has also been created. 
Um, according to the UN Clause Treaty, we see that each state is um, granted 200 nautical miles adjacent to their coastline. But this is, however, contested and this, this may also overlap. Additionally, the United States, one of the Arctic members, is not a signatory to this treaty. This can only increase uh, tensions, especially with the melting Arctic and more countries trying to um, get more access to this region. Additionally, because of the eternal, internal and territorial water disputes, and the opening of new passages such as the northern sea routes and more countries wanting have to have a say in this region, tensions can also increase and challenges will be apparent. Additionally, because of the unsettled bilateral nature of the territories in the Arctic, there is no international treaty providing and granting states um, the territorial integrity within the Arctic. So because, again, of climate change and an increasing interest in the region, more countries and current countries that have a say in the Arctic are going to have to try to fight or um, maintain their territorial integrity. So because of the melting Arctic, there are new opportunities. It is no surprise that current states have increased their military presence and influence within the region. Um, additionally, because of the accountability and maritime access to the Arctic, we see that Five of the eight um, Arctic members are actually NATO members as well. NATO has recently denounced Russia's activity and military buildup within the Arctic region and are um, worried about their intentions. As if we connect it to the Russian activity within the European continent, we see that they have violated the territorial, integ territorial integrity of Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia. So it is of interest and of concern to NATO to see how this will um, reflect and translate to the Arctic region, especially since this region is becoming of more strategic importance to the global community. So in conclusion, we see that the Arctic is a strategic, resourceful region that promotes, um, that provides military and a geographic um, uh, means for the international community. And we see uh, with the effects of climate change well underway, and an ice-free um, Arctic has opened up room for more security concerns, but also economic activities such as fishing, tourism, and shipping. So in the next couple of years, the territorial claims of and resource distribution, which are already contested, might become even more of a challenge to um, the Arctic region, which can only intensify the conflict and perhaps start a conflict in light of climate change, as climate change also creates a form of exasperating current weaknesses. So this only um, stresses the need for the Arctic Council to bring states together to the table to make their intentions clear and um, cooperate for um, fighting uh, climate change will be more important in the coming years. Thank you very much for listening.